Welcome to WetPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WetPixel, and I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Always good to see you. Um, one of the things that gets frequently asked, well, possibly turn that question around, um, when we talk about split shots on WetPixel, on the forums, one of the questions that most often gets asked is, how do you stop droplets in the dome port? Now, I Alex, can see that one coming. <laughs> Alex has a bunch of wonderful split shots on his website and elsewhere, um, and is well known for the quality of his split shots. So he seems like an ideal person to ask how he stops getting droplets on his own port. There we are, Alex. Over to you. Okay, well, to dodge your question, as I always try and do, the droplets are not the thing to worry most about split-level photography. But I'm going to not get too sidetracked and get on to the thing. So I think the first thing that are really important is, first of all, find the right conditions. Yeah. If you have difficult, rough conditions, you're always going to struggle controlling the meniscus and particularly having your dome port getting wet all the time and, and have those problems with droplets. Yeah. If you wait for the right conditions, those issues are much less of a thing, so less of a problem. So definitely do try and find the right conditions to, to um, first of all. And I know that sounds like a, a slightly flippant answer, but actually it's really important. Yeah. You know, landscape photographers wait days and days once they found a great view to get exactly the conditions they want for a good picture. Yeah. So learn a bit of their patience as an underwater photographer and wait for the opportunity for spirit level photography to come to you, not just go, oh, I've got some coral and some palm trees close together. I'm going to go straight out and do my split level. Wait for the conditions to be right. It, it, um, it may be worth just defining right conditions, just just to be so everyone's completely sure. What we're talking about here is flat calm. Um, that's really yeah. what we need. Um, is we need we need a, a flat calm water surface. Um, if you've got waves or even possibly what some people call ripples, it's going to be much much harder to get a clean line across the centre of, of of the image. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and split levels, you know, don't necessarily need to be necessarily at an absolutely perfect line. You know, some water movement is fine, but the calmer the water, the easier it is to shoot. Yeah. And if you've got a great location for split level photography, you want to chase those conditions. And it might be a time of day thing. It might be, you know, because, you know, in a lot of places with around the coast, you know, you get a sea breeze. Yep. So early in the morning or late in the afternoon, the breeze tends to drop away again. Yep. Those can be particularly good times to get clearer conditions than, than maybe in the middle of the day. But it's it's all about the location. It's all, It can be about the day or, or whatever. Anyway, I just think that's really important because everyone wants me to tell them, you know, some magic, you know. Um, Ingredient X. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, you know, these things are just as important. The next thing that really matters is having a big dome port. The yeah. bigger the dome port you can lay your hands on for these types of shots, the better. And I think particularly if you're a micro four-thirds shooter, where most of the dome ports people buy tend to be very small, have a think about maybe buying a big second-hand dome port that you can adapt to your, your system. Yeah. Depends a little bit on the lens you're using, because if you've got a very short lens, you probably haven't got enough uh, space to put a bigger dome port on with adapters. Yeah. But you might be surprised that you can find a very cheap old acrylic dome, you know, maybe a, an, an, an eight or nine-inch dome, um, and then you can use that specifically for split levels. So, but you know, if you are whatever you are as a photographer, if you've got own more than one dome, the bigger the dome, the better. And um, I actually own some lightweight travel acrylic domes for split level shooting, which I don't use diving, and they're light enough to nearly always take on a trip with me because they, they although they're quite bulky, they don't add a lot of luggage weight yep. to my luck, to my to my what I'm taking with me. Yep. And they're really valuable for these types of shoots. It, it's worth just pausing for a moment there because um, obviously dome ports, glass or acrylic, that's a big debate on its own right. Um, but I mean, for split levels, really, it, the, the material of the dome makes very little difference. Um, so, so it's not it's not really worth getting too hung up on what it's made out of. And um, the advantage of the acrylic, obviously, it's a lot easier to travel with than that it's lighter. Um, so, if you're taking a dome specifically for splits, it may well be worth considering an acrylic one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, something that can help you. Sometimes we take splits and we, we're in shallow water. We walk in off the beach. Yeah. We can stand up. We don't even wear fins to take them. Yep. Um, when I shoot at Stingray City in the Cayman Islands, which is a similar situation, I don't wear a face mask. I just, you know, go in, I wear a hat, I wear my sunglasses, and I, I, I shoot my split levels wearing sunglasses, not not face mask. Um, <laughs> but so, you know, so it depends on, and, and you're not allowed to wear fins at Stingray City, so you have to stand up. Um, so anyway, but that's that side to side. If you are swimming to take the shots, then actually that acrylic dome has a bit less weight to it and actually helps the flotation of the housing yep. too. So, but... The one thing I would say is that um, 
droplets, I think, do form on domes where there's imperfections and dirt on the dome. And acrylic domes typically have a little bit more of those as they get older because they're more easily scratched and damaged. So yeah. if you do use an acrylic dome for this, you need to maintain it in good condition. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you'll start getting droplets catching on areas of, of imperfection on it. Yeah. So that just just an aside on that. Um, big domes, though, they help for a couple of things. They, they obviously help us control the meniscus. Yeah. They stop the water slopping up and down as much and creating those droplets. They also help us optically a little bit because it makes it easier to focus above and below the surface with a big dome. Yeah. Um, and that's to do with the way the dome port optics work. You can watch Adam's um, wet pixel live about that if you want to understand a little bit. But basically, the virtual image of a big dome is further away. Yeah. So as a result, it's easier to manage because you only get the virtual image underwater. So it's it's closer to being the same distance where the distance background. Yeah. A close, you know, a small dome makes a virtual image close, and you've still got to focus on the distance back distant background. Mm -hmm. So you, it's easier to get the focus of the big dome. Mm -hmm. The big dome also because it controls the meniscus better. It gives you more lens flexibility. The easiest lens to shoot a split level with is a fisheye, the widest viewing lens you can get. But actually, if you have a really big dome and it's controlling the meniscus well, you can start trying those shots with different lenses and create some very different effects. So that's another advantage of big dome. But that's, those are all side, side, side points. Yep. Um, the next way to avoid droplets, and this is perhaps the most facetious of all my answers, is to not get the dome port wet. Yep, keep dome port um, dry. And, yeah, and that is perfectly possible if you're shooting in a pool, if you're shooting off a beach, and you're walking into the water with the dome, then carry it in on your head, when it's, get everything right, when it's time to shoot, just dip the lower half of the dome, and you won't have droplets on the top half of the dome. It's a little bit more work getting in and having to carry the camera, it's obviously much easier just to drop the camera into the water, let the water take its weight and walk out, but if you put that bit of effort in, you can keep a clean dome port. Yep. Um, it is also possible off a boat, if you get the flotation of your system right, I really like traveling with these, um, these new ones, but with these type of Popeye arms. I um, often put a pair of these in my luggage as, as space. I call them Popeye arms because if you remember Popeye the Sailor Man, he had really yeah. chunky arms. Yeah. Um, and these are really useful. I, I don't put them on the camera. I'll just use them. I'll put them, put the strobe arms down underneath the housing and bolt one of these below. And it gives a lot of lift on the housing to put it out of the water. But anything you can find that's buoyant, you know, plastic bottles, life jackets, um, foam, yeah, life jackets on boats, all those things can help get the camera out of the water. And again, if the camera is nice and trimmed so it actually floats half in, half out, you don't get too many problems with droplets. Yeah. So those things are really helpful. Um, I, I remember watching a picture of you or seeing a picture of you once, Alex, with we were using um, children's armbands, children's. Um, yeah, this was with one of my big domes, and yeah. that was because it was very hard to trim. Yeah. And the good thing about armbands is I could, um, or water wings or flotation wings, bands, yeah. they're called in different countries, yeah. um, it, with armbands is you can blow air in and out of them so you can adjust the buoyancy. Yeah. Um, I, I've actually gone, gone away from, from that. And they're also really light and they fold really small. Yeah. So they're, they're easy to travel with. Yeah. But actually I went away from that because I didn't like the bright color on the, on the rig and they're always orange or yellow. Yeah. If I could find some tech black ones. Then I don't think it makes tech armbands. But Camo yeah. armband bands. Yeah, that, that was, that, those probably, I probably would use them, but having the bright orange or the bright yellow, um, I didn't really like it. Sometimes you could get some reflections in some situations with them. Um, but and then another thing you can consider is trying to dry the dome during the, the, the dive. Either having someone on a boat with a towel so you can swim back to the boat, get the dome really dried and cleaned, make sure they've got a towel to dry it with, and then kind of a microfiber cloth to clean oh, it shit. with. Yeah. And again, you're focusing on the top of them. Those things can also help depending on the situation. Quite often um, when we go and shoot in the sandbar and the Cayman and we're standing up, people often use another strobe arm up above the housing and you take two strobe arm bits, fold them together, and they make a nice clamp. And then you can hold a towel in that, which is just up above the air. And then you can take it off, dry your housing, put it back in the clamped area, and it works for a little bit. Um, so yeah, and just kind of like a, a little beer mat type towel, beer, you know, towel is, is quite good for that sort of thing. But I'm generally tall. drying doesn't work in most situations. It's just too easy for that towel to end up soaking wet and then it ends up dripping down onto the dome port if yeah. you're holding it. So yeah. it's not a great solution, but it can work in some situations. Yeah. It ends up smearing as well as rather than drying as well as. Yeah. The, and that's where you want the two, the two towel situation on the boat. Yeah. Is you have one to get it dry and then you have a, like a, a proper one to finish it. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you're doing it yourself on the dive, yeah, you have exactly that problem. Yeah. Um, and then we come to the what everyone was expecting this video to be about, yeah. and that is what treatments can you do to your dome port? 
um, to help you stop you getting driplets, droplets. Now, most of these treatments work by putting a film on the, the dome port, and actually they're more use, useful, actually when you've got that film, is you tend to dip the dome, lift it up, and then before the droplets form, you often shoot through it. Yep. Um, they probably will still create droplets. Yep. I do remember, and I don't remember the name of the product, a guy um, on WetPixel, must have been at least 10 or 15 years ago, actually did a lot of research on this and introduced a dome port cleaning product that worked amazingly well. Yep. And it, you could drip, pull out the water, and it was a real water print. And it, he, he sent me some, and he sent quite a, quite a few of us bought some, and it was kind of these three different chemicals that you rubbed on, one to clean the dome, one to coat it, and then another one to finish it. And I remember one of them was quite nasty. You had to wear gloves for it. Mm. And it was, it, was, it was a bit too complicated, but it worked brilliantly. Mm. So there is an amazing solution out there. Yep. But most of us go for simpler ones in the field. And the two that I use, because they're, they're, they're easy to, to get hands on, is one is saliva. Yep. And I you know, put saliva on top of the dome. Obviously, not ideal in these virus times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go around everywhere. Yeah. Make, sure you it, make sure you do it to your own dome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you rub it on the dome um, and then dip it and you'd have this film and it would definitely reduce the droplet formation. Yep. And then the other one that I tend to use more than saliva is potato starch. On most dive boats or most resorts, it's pretty easy to get a, a half potato. Just get a half potato, rub it on the top part of the dome. Yep. Um, it does leave quite a bitty mess. So you need to dip the dome first. And then what's left behind is, is, is really good at getting rid of, of, of droplets. And it definitely works much better than an untreated dome. With the, with the dipping and then shooting thing, obviously timing here becomes very important because yeah. you, you, know, you need to make sure that you catch that precise moment before you start getting droplets forming. The, the droplets will form. All you're doing is catching it just before they form. Um, so, so it is and important. And these films just do reduce the number of droplets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not it's not that there won't be droplets. It's just that you have a, I don't know, second or two when there aren't any droplets and you can get the picture. Um, and if you shoot too early, your meniscus is going like this and it, yeah. it, it, it's all yeah. rubbish. You need to time it very precisely. precisely. And then there are some, there's, there's quite a few chemical products on the market that are designed to do, not designed for cameras, um, apart from this this one from, from Asia, I remember from the old days, um, but are designed as water repellents. Yep. Um, the most well-known is probably Rain-X. Yep. which I certainly use in my, on my car yep. um, in the in the windscreen washer. And that definitely reduces droplet formation really well. Yep. I have um, Rain-X you can buy as a spray, yep. um, but you can also buy it as like little sachets in like a wet wipe soaked in Rain-X. Right. And those are good as a traveling photographer. Yeah, great. Uh, you're not carrying chemicals. Around. I actually think Rain-X is probably, is, is, uh, anyway, um, there is a lot of debate about Rain-X, about whether you can use it on acrylic domes or not acrylic domes. Yep. But certainly when I bought Rain-X in the shops here, it's designed a lot of the time for motorbike, for people who ride motorbikes. Of course, they're acrylic. Yeah, yeah. And they're always made of plastic. Yeah, they are, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Uh, so I've been told many times and read many times, you can't use Rain-X on a plastic dome. Yep. I've never tried Rain-X on a plastic dome. But... They sell Rain-X to work on, on visors, so I don't quite understand where that's come from. There are also products that they use for light aircraft, and, and aircraft winds, windscreens are always acrylic, they're never glass, um, and, and they're designed for the same. So so I, I don't know how related they are to Rain-X, but certainly, certainly those types of products are definitely designed to work on acrylic. So I think probably it's a question of looking around a bit and finding mm. out. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where the, the rain experts, you know, that you shouldn't use rain, it's an acrylic thing comes from. There is there is a school of thought out that says that you shouldn't, but I, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know if it's based on anything beyond beyond rumour or not. Um, yeah, well, one of those is called RVR, I think you, you told RVR. me. RVR, yeah, yeah. RVR, yeah. 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 So yeah. that's, yeah. Um, and then I know people also use various polishes, waxes and polishes on the dome can, can work. I've never tried these myself, but... Um, Most so famously, it's David Dublet. discussion on the website. David Dubelé um, recommends recommends lemon pledge. <laughs> lemon pledge. There we go. I don't think, yeah. Um, and you know, I know that there's also other waxes and things people have, have tried, and, and and do work to some degree. I think having a clean dome is really important, and I know quite a lot of people also use the Novus One, the the dome cleaning polish, um, at least to me yeah, to make sure that the the dome is in good condition beforehand. I don't know whether that leaves any film or anything. But at least it gets rid of any minor, minor imperfections, particularly on acrylic domes, that are actually the sites where the droplets form. Mm. 
But ultimately for me, you've also got Photoshop on your side. Um, and if you, you know, I'd rather have a great picture that needs a few droplets removed in Photoshop than spend my whole day worrying about my droplets and end up with a rubbish picture with no droplets. And, so, and generally the area of above the sort of the area that affects drop that gets affected by droplets you often got quite a lot of sky so actually it's a fairly easy photoshop job to remove those droplets um you yeah. know, because they're often not in key detail areas as well mm. so yeah, yeah 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 so that is absolutely everything i can think on about the the subject of droplets excellent um, so yeah, the, the droplets in, in not more than two thousand words. Thank you, Alex. Um, Alex has a, a wonderful array of spent shots um, on his website at amuster.com and on Instagram at um, Alex Mustard One on Instagram. Yeah. On my website, you can search for images in the search function. I typically use the word split level as opposed to half and half or under over. Okay. Um, so. If you search split, you'll probably find a fair amount of split level shots on my website. Yeah, lots of inspiration there, so that's great. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is Inon. Um, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Um, please like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, please feel free to add your favorite solution for making sure that you don't get droplets on your dome port in the comment section below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next time.